we started last week we found a few problems and still think we're able to solve them and to restore this watch it will be a lot of work and we hope that as much as possible uh, we'll be able to um, be able to stream the complete process including making a 22 200 year old um, balance staff from scratch i'm still not sure if we're going to fill up the markers see if we can they were filled up and there is one line this line over here somebody somewhere you see rubbed inside the silver do you see that and so the material is slightly pushed out and if i play with the light you probably can see those lines it is incredibly thin silver but because this over here is guilloche I'll show you um, in the microscope in a moment there is no way that I can push back inwards if I play with the light a bit like this and you can see this is the line and it's slightly upwards but because this guilloche, these guilloche lines beautiful symmetrical but if I try to push down the material I push down those lines as well so well restoration is one thing I may try it here slightly bit with a bigger wood and this is not too bad but here in there's nothing I can do you can see is still some lines visible but it's such an improvement and well it's part of the history of the watch as well um, sometimes making it absolutely perfect is not the best way for restoration balance spring which expands uh, when it becomes warmer the watch will run slow and here temperature compensating timing pins that goes inward and you remember the timing pins through the pendulum makes it run a slightly bit faster it is beautiful stuff still we're 2022 now how will you make this bimetal in this one piece shape I still wouldn't know even with modern tools I'm wondering about the construction of the balance staff it seems that there is a transition I'm still I'm already on full magnification yeah oh it is slightly different there's a transition of material there and there so the piece of the balance staff that is gripping the balance wheel the rim it's way wider than modern ones there's the table and there is the roller do I 
apply some force to the roller or not. So there's the balance stuff there. There is the rivet. Do you see the slides? The rivet is push that and then down. So in between here you see the table. And then underneath you see the roller. It has to come off. And <laughs> for a repivot. Ooh. It's really unusual because it is almost impossible to get both pivots exactly in the, the straight line. So there will be maybe a wobble like this and probably a wobble between those two. So I dare to say without exception the balance staff is always made in one piece and older ones are better than the ones we use uh, on the lathe um, over there. Um, I'll make a quick drawing because I think it's fascinating. This is a very old piece of manuscript and I have the actual one here as well. Uh, we got several and they're extremely hard to date but with extremely old books uh, we think we have one from the early 18th century, so the, the early 1700s, and maybe a bit before that. Here is just I just one got one uh, a modern equivalent. The thing is, if you're not familiar with a lathe, you put in some round material, and with a cutter you remove material. So you can make a balance staff, winding stem, parts like that. The tif difference between the old ones and the later ones, we still use pieces like this. Uh, this one I just uh, got out of, the, out of the cabinet, but we have quite a few. This is one we don't use yet. This one, you place the material in a collet it grips and then with a motor it turns and you, with both hands you can place your cutter. So it grips only from one side and then you get some nice space to remove material. The older ones on, here on both sides there's a tiny dent so you place the material, make it, I don't think I've ever uh, give, give lathe uh, too much attention during a live stream. You've got some staff material, a rod, make the tips very pointy and then place that in between those two thingies. This one is detachable. Oh yeah. Hey, this one is uh, the other way around. It, it, it should be like this. Maybe under the microscope. Do you see? There's a small hole in there. And here some rod. I hope this isn't too boring. <laughs> So this wheel 
is moving freely. This one is moving freely and that bit with the hole is stationary. And there is a hole as well. Well, if you, we've got some things like that, you can click on the side. So have you, it looks a bit like this. So this is just a bit of staff material, whatever you want to use. A pin grips on the side and here that pin will push against that pin. So it takes it, the movement makes it go around. At the time they used a bow. Yeah. Like this, you go like that. Well, maybe I can show you with the bow. You move that bit. Very interesting. This bow is of steel, but the really old ones look like plastic. But that is actually whalebone. Uh, Balijn in Dutch, uh, they made uh, uh, umbrellas from them as well. So the really old ones are whalebone, it's quite flexible. It is similar to a Jaco, but that's for polish, polishing tivet, pivots. But this is the real lathe. And because why it's so accurate, for me that is genius. These ones are still making the most accurate balanced staffs possible. Simple. Once you know it, it is so simple. The shortest distance between those two lines is always straight. So even if this lathe, again, this one is 300 years old, if it's slightly like this, slightly like this, you're still making a perfectly straight balance staff. If it's slightly like this, the distance between the two pivots is exactly straight. That's why these older ones are still the most accurate you can use for making a balanced staff. I think that is fascinating. And here, because you grip it just from one side and then you have to turn it over to do the other one, uh, there's always a chance it's slightly off. And I know there are ways for this one. You can use this one between the centers as well. But if you make it with a collet, usually, well, the traditional way is really is always accurate. And this is why they were able to make balanced staffs in the 17th century so thin and so straight. Well, <laughs> I do hope that wasn't too boring, but uh, I think it was just it's fascinating stuff. Thank you.